Time for more Seattle Real Estate Radio with your hosts, Christian Nossum and Dan Keller. Hello, hello, and welcome back to Seattle Real Estate Radio here on KKOL 1300 AM. We are here every Monday from 3 to 4 p.m., and yes, it is Monday. As much as some people don't want it to be Monday, it's Monday. It's Monday. It happens. Mondays happen. It is. Every Monday, we're here. (laughs) Um, So today... We are here with some pretty awesome people. So I'm going to yeah. let Dan take over. Yeah, some really great local people. Uh, I say this, they are the owners and lovers. <laughs> <laughs> it's a husband and wife team. <laughs> you know, and these guys, are, these guys are a hoot. You're going to love listening to them today. But uh, Diana and Stephen Naramore, correct, are here. They are the owners of Sip and Ship right here in Finney. Finneywood, Ballard, Finneywood, they got Ballard. two locations. So Two locations, we're going to learn a little bit more about that. But I want to give you kind of an intro. Uh, we like to intro our guests because I've been guests before on shows and had to introduce myself, and it's just kind of awkward, you know, bragging about yourself. and Yeah, no one likes that. And really calling yourself a lover. I mean, I'm here with my <laughs> lover, so I'm going to do that today. But uh, So, hey Stephen, hey, Stephen grew up in Rochester, New York. He attended college in Ohio where he majored in theater arts and English literature. Stephen worked in the cruise industry where... Where he met his lover, Diana, in Los <laughs> Angeles. They fell madly in love with each other, and they moved their family to Seattle, and shortly thereafter, uh, opened up Sip and Ship. So, Stephen is currently the CFO, CFO, Chief Financial Officer mm. of Sip and Ship. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Diana, she grew up in the inner cities of Chicago, Illinois, and Detroit, Michigan, and earned her Bachelor's of Science degree from the University of Phoenix by attending night school. I love that. Love, love, love that hustle. Mm-hmm. Her days were spent working in management and customer service and sales for Princess Cruises. She is a mother of three boys, and she oversees the day-to-day operations in both locations of Sip and Ship, the Ballard and Finneywood loca- locations. Sip and Ship is approaching its 14th year in business so first off congratulations one on being happily married Mm -hmm. lovers Mm -hmm. and two a husband and wife that run a business together (laughs) and it's been successfully operated for 14 Mm -hmm. years congrats thank Thank you you. thank you so yeah well welcome to and congrats yeah so tell us a little about sip and ship and how it works uh, well, we uh, started it back in uh, 2002. Mm-hmm. Uh, we had recently moved here, and um, uh, we'd each left the cruise industry and were sort of in search of something. And Seattle was a, um, a, a landing spot for mm-hmm. us, but we didn't have any jobs. Uh, and Diana got a, a part-time job at a, um, a similar kind of a store up in Queen Anne. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, they ended up uh, mentoring us and uh, encouraging us to open up a, 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 a business. And uh, I thought it would be a great, great idea to add the coffee element to it because mm-hmm. my it's joke, Seattle. yeah, my joke yeah. is you put coffee with anything in Seattle, you're mm-hmm. bound to be successful. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and it made Diana laugh, yeah. and uh, that was uh, so. That was kind of the, uh, you know, the the genesis of it. Oh, yeah. Diana loves logistics; she yeah. loves handling things from point A to point B. Mm. And I, I was, uh, I love coffee, and I love doing anything I can with her. And that was uh, how we got started. So this whole lover thing is not fake. These guys, <laughs> this is real. These guys, they, what a story. No, that's, that, that's awesome. Um, tell me, okay, so I, have, I haven't been to the shop, unfortunately. Um, Christian has. It's this. kind of an institution. It is. Yeah. It's kind okay. of a big deal. It is a big deal. <laughs> well, that's why they're here. Or they're here. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so if I have not been in, you know, tell us about Sip and Ship. Like if we were to go into one of your locations, what does it look like? What do you guys do? Well, the first thing you're, uh, we would, uh, the first store was Ballard. That mm-hmm. was what we opened originally. And um, the first thing you're going to notice is there's a Dutch door when you mm-hmm. walk in. So it's, it's a great spot for a summertime, mm-hmm. and it has a, a wonderful cool. feeling, wonderful way to kind of welcome people in. But the first thing you're going to see is you're going to see gifts and cards um, right in front of you. There's uh, different types of, uh, of uh, wines that we now offer as well. Uh, to your right, you're going to see uh, the shipping counter, and mm-hmm. the shipping counter is uh, unique in its own respect because it has uh, open mailboxes, kind of similar to uh, kind of an old trading post oh, type cool. of a feel. Okay. Not like the ones with a key, a lock and a key. We don't have a 24-hour access type of a 
of a um, an approach to this business. Cool. But um, and then a library ladder uh, goes along the front of them. So we uh, someone comes in, they say, I have uh, box number one fifteen, and okay. we get the library, you know, climb oh, up the nice. ladder okay. and get them the mail. So it's That's a cool. way that we've always um, the way we wanted to approach it was getting to know our customers. Uh, face to face. So eventually, okay. obviously, you walk in the door. We'll recognize it's you and say, "Oh, here, here's your mail," and uh, and uh, welcome them yeah. into the store. And then, and then at that point, you get to offer them a cup of coffee mm-hmm. or maybe uh, someone's birthday's coming up. You, know, you can pick out a card. Uh, most of the gifts that we have in the store are mailable, so we can put it in a padded mailer and send cool. it off. And uh, be um, you know, you can you can hit a lot of different uh, items on, yeah. on your list. To what is the best cup of coffee you guys serve in there? Mm. Diana, the best drink. Diana. Mm. Well, our drip is amazing. So mm. we offer two types of drips. We have a dark roast, uh, which is called our diner blend. Mm. And then we have a more Sumatra flavor, which is our medium roast. But I have to say, our lattes are pretty amazing. Mm. Um, and we have, you know, being in Seattle and surrounded by coffee, you sort of become... Um, you cater your services to your customers. Yeah. And we are... Uh, experiencing a lot of customers that have milk substitutes that yeah, they mm-hmm. want to try. So we're sort of um, dabbling in that and we've recently introduced hemp milk mm. as an alternative mm-hmm. um, in addition to all the other ones that we have. Haven't done uh, coconut yet, but... Mm. So I'm a coconut guy. I are you? coconut. I use coconut creamer in the morning in do my you? coffee. We do but almond I, milk. Yeah, almond milk. Yeah. Yes, yeah. almond milk is very popular. Yeah, I mm-hmm. use the vanilla flavored coconut creamer, and I'm a fan. Mm-hmm. I used to use soy, and I don't have anything against milk. I'm not allergic. I just yeah. You know, didn't want to use half yeah. and half, so yeah. I use that. Mm-hmm. But uh, right on. Okay, so I got to swing in there. <laughs> I know. Because I'm a drip guy. So yeah, so much. <laughs> well, and I, I think from the coffee perspective, originally we we realized we're not, we weren't going to put up a couple air pots in the corner. Yeah. Because you just can't get away with that in yeah. Seattle. I think if you know we were doing this somewhere else, maybe you might be able to do that. And I have seen other mailbox stores that actually do that. But in Seattle, you have to, you know, we have the La, La Morzoco machines. Mm-hmm. We've got uh, all of the all of the equipment, you know, to basically make ourselves legitimate uh, that we're really offering, you know, a, a quality cup of coffee nice. or latte. I love it. I, one of the things that I wanted to ask you is, have you guys noticed a change over time in regards to, like, people using coffee places to do additional things? Are you, have you seen any maybe competitors pop up? I mean, 14 years is a, is a lot of... A it's a time. lifetime in, yeah. uh, in small business land. Yeah, yeah, ex- mm-hmm. yeah especially yeah. around here. I mean, I see it just in my short six, seven years in being in finance, I see a lot of people, I write a, Nash, a recognized mortgage blog, so many people have tried to copy. And I see mm-hmm. my publications like verbatim copy and pasted. Yeah. Are you yeah. guys seeing anything like that? Any other shops, any other like businesses try to pop up to a you know, hybrid of maybe yours? Absolutely, uh, yeah. not not of ours, not like a sip and ship. Mm-hmm. Um, although many years ago, somebody did try to open up something, and he actually came and talked to me, and I said, "I encourage, yeah, do yeah. go ahead and figure it out, you know, do something." Yeah. And then he ended up he, he wanted to call it sip and ship, and uh, <laughs> so, <laughs> like, no, we can't do that. But you know, call it mocha and mail or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, but there's there's always Duh. competition. I mean, that's that's something that we've yeah. we learned pretty early on. There's always going to be something uh, yeah. out there where uh, someone's going to try to kind of capitalize on something that you're mm-hmm. doing. But just the coffee shops in general. I mean, you I mean, we we exist because of a Starbucks, you yeah. know, and because those that yeah. that community kind of uh, feel is out there. So uh, we exist because of that. Mm-hmm. Uh, certainly, there's a lot of other coffee shops out there that uh, that do fantastic jobs. And the uh, we were just talking a little bit ago about the advent of Wi-Fi, mm-hmm. and that really didn't exist mm-hmm. so much when we first started. Mm-hmm. And now it's it's everywhere. And I was going to ask you yeah. guys that. How has Sip and Ship evolved over the last 14 years? So how it started versus where you're at now. So Yeah, Wi-Fi for yeah. one, definitely. I mean, that was something uh, we didn't do, and then we started mm-hmm. it, and then it was something you, people were saying, well, you got to pay for it, mm-hmm. or you've got to have a different... Passcode. Uh, mm-hmm. uh, yeah, the different key mm-hmm. every, yeah. every day, which was kind of... Uh, annoying. Yeah, so now it's Very just it's a, a, an open... Yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. spot, you know, for pe- people to do. So, you, I mean, but you go by places, uh, Cupcake Real, um, uh, Bauhaus, which is actually recently Mario closed. Donut. Mario mm-hmm. Donut. They, you see everybody in there with their laptops. Fiore, on, and, uh, yeah. Yeah, they're all yeah. really uh, pervasive, and, and that's where people are going to go to do a lot of work and yeah. uh, hang out. I think this is a bri- brilliant model. Um, I just spoke at a, uh, on a, on a marketing call. It was for a company, and they wanted a guest speaker on, um, 
on marketing and sales. And one of the things I talked about was the two key components of successful businesses. One is great marketing and two, innovation. And you're super innovative. You took a, a, an idea, a model like Starbucks with a little bit of innovation and now you've got a sip and ship. So yeah. I love it. Yeah, I think just also that it's a three prong business. Mm -hmm. So it's, you know, coffee, you know, gifts and cards mm -hmm. and then shipping. Mm -hmm. And they all kind of feed off of each other. And, but they're all going to have mm -hmm. highs and lows. You know, coffee's going to suddenly get super expensive. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, <coughs> fewer and fewer people are going to be using coffee. But So that may dip a little mm -hmm. bit, but maybe mail will come up or gifts and cards will have their own, depending on what kind of sure. kind of things that we well, have. Well, and we have mobile. seen um, trends change, especially in our neighborhoods where the buildings have gone, more mm -hmm. buildings have gone up mm -hmm. and more condos and apartments have arrived. And so it's sh shifted our shipping business mm -hmm. to catering to um, customers who do a lot more online shopping mm -hmm. and they need the security for their packages instead of having yep. them land on their porch yeah. and being abandoned yeah. or Old. gone missing. Um, they will come and use our services so that we can secure their packages for them and then they can come pick them up at their convenience yep. as well as the prepaid um, returns too. So, I mean, we host something that we didn't see coming um, a few years ago and it's really hit uh, significantly over the last two years I think we've really seen an increase in that yeah that was something that yeah. when I saw that on your website cause I didn't know you guys did that but why don't you explain that for people that don't mm -hmm. know what you're talking about with the prepaid shipping or returning yeah. stuff for Amazon or whatever right the I think the largest two that we service at the moment um, and it grows every day is mm -hmm. Amazon and Zappos I think yep. those are two that people can relate to immediately uh, where you can essentially buy uh, several pairs of shoes with Zappos and try them on in your home and then decide that you only maybe want one of the mm -hmm. four that were delivered to your house mm -hmm. so you would then put them back in the box and bring the box to us and if you were unable to print your label at home we could print that for you and certainly our tape is always free so we would rapidly tape it up and <laughs> uh, put a latte in your hand and you're on your way exactly mm -hmm. I mean, it's a great way to get people in the door mm -hmm. and to just hang out yeah. and yeah. when they're there that's the hardest part half the time is just getting people in the door yeah. once they're right. there they're going to start looking around and go oh yeah mm -hmm. I do need another bottle of wine mm -hmm. right oh right. yeah <laughs> it is grandma's birthday coming mm -hmm. up exactly. right. oh yeah yes. hey that'd be yes. great if I could have my, sh my packages shipped here there you so go. I don't have to worry mm -hmm. if that new computer I just bought that's getting shipped on Amazon mm -hmm. in two days, mm -hmm. is that going to be sitting on my doorstep and right. someone's just going to... And all these people here are so nice and mm. friendly. <laughs> 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 okay, it's true. okay. Well, that's, yeah, that's pretty awesome. I mean, that's, yeah. this is why I, I love their, yeah. their idea. I love the, the, the whole community aspect of it, too. Yeah. And that's what I want to go into yeah. next a little bit. Sweet. So Sweet. Um, stay tuned. We're going to have more from the owners of Sip and Ship here in just a minute on Seattle Real Estate Radio. Stay tuned. You're listening to Seattle Real Estate Radio with your hosts, Christian Nossum and Dan Keller. We'll be right back. We're back with Seattle Real Estate Radio with your hosts, Christian Nossum and Dan Keller. All right. Hey, we are back with Diana and Steven. Steve, what do you go by, bud? Uh, usually usually Steven, but Steven? that's fine. Steven? Either way. They are the owners of Sip and Ship, mm -hmm. and we had a great conversation with them before we went to break, and uh, man, I'm excited to learn a little bit more. Christian's been into their mm -hmm. into their both of the, the, their locations. I haven't yet, and so I may have to swing by on my way home. I know. You know, you do. I know. Pick up a bottle of wine in each one, just to what? You know, even it out. I thought it was coffee. Oh, well, yeah, we got that too. <laughs> do you guys serve alcohol in the store? No, we don't. We hmm. only sell it by the bottle. But occasionally we'll have a could little someone, tasting. Could <laughs> someone open a bottle in the store and sit down and drink it? I wish. No. <laughs> well, he, he, he's asking because he does that. <laughs> I'm that guy that would go into your store, buy a ball, pop it open, and just start pouring for He everybody. doesn't even have anything to mail. He doesn't have anything to pick up. Just well, if he had to mail a bottle of wine, we are probably the only one of the only yeah. licenses in Seattle that can do that. So oh, wow. you would be in luck. So that's big to know. Yeah. That's big to know. I've been shut down before. 
for sending a bottle of wine to a client. And I guess one of the only ways I found out to do that is you got to go online and you got to order through a company that ships. Mm -hmm. So that's huge to know. That's my big aha so far. Mm -hmm. And and we didn't even mean to talk about that. So yeah, just (laughs) just me joking around, (laughs) (laughs) which I tend to do. You're a wino over there. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. Hey, we both have, we need to have a winery on here. We'll talk about that later. But anyway, so bring, yeah, man, tell us a little bit more, Christian. All right. So you guys have two locations. The Ballard one opened 2002. That was your first one. So tell us about the second one and when that opened and and how that came about. Why? And well, the second one, I, once you, you start your, your first business and it's going along and you're, and it's certainly not easy, but it's, mm-hmm. it seems to be growing and going in the direction that, that you want it to, everyone starts, yeah, well, when's your next one going to yeah. gonna open up? It's kind of like children. You know, your yep, first exactly. one, you know, when's the next one coming? Just like when you get engaged, when's the wedding? Exactly. Then right, you get right. married, when's the kids? When's, yeah. And yeah, it's the same, same All thing. the pressures. <laughs> yes, exactly. Plenty of pressures. <laughs> so um, so this, the Ballard store was doing really well and um, we were looking for that possibility and uh, we uh, came across, there was a, a smaller, kind of uh, older, established mailbox store that had been there for a long time up in Greenwood. Mm-hmm. And uh, he wanted to sell. So we, uh, we stepped in and we said, yeah, we'll do that. And so we purchased his, his business mm-hmm. and uh, moved it about a block down uh, just north of 85th, mm-hmm. which uh, into a very large location, about 3,000 square feet. Wow. And it ended up being... Um, a, a tough go. Well, it, that all happened in 2008, right when oh, the, yeah. you know, well, the crash or everything. Yeah. So everybody was struggling, but we're proud to say that we we weathered five years mm-hmm. of, of the lease. We mm-hmm. made it through, and at the end, we weren't exactly sure what was going to happen. But another piece of property came available closer to Finney Finneywood, Finney Ridge, Ridge. Mm-hmm. and that was uh, about ten blocks towards Finney. Mm-hmm. And uh, we were able to secure that location, mm-hmm. and by moving it uh, to that location has made all the difference. That yeah. was in 2013, the summer of 2013. Yeah, that's a totally different feel, even though it's mm-hmm. only 10 block difference. Yeah, totally different neighborhood mm-hmm. feel. Right, and mm-hmm. and what we learned is that uh, most about 70 percent of our customers were making the trip from Finney mm-hmm. across 85th hmm. to come to us at that time, mm-hmm. and now now we're right in their front lap yeah, essentially, exactly. and we're so we're getting all those customers and then all the other people who maybe who hadn't tried us or not who coming. didn't want to go 10 blocks exactly yeah now exactly. it's so yeah. that's that's uh, that's been exciting for us since uh, the summer of 2013 that's mm-hmm. really started to grow and doing the things that we were hoping it was going to do from the very beginning mm-hmm. um, so um, so I actually haven't been to that one, but is it a pretty similar setup then as the Ballard one? It is it's smaller. Okay. Uh, it's it's a, um, a a building that has um, two uh, spots in it. So mm-hmm. it has we're a thousand square feet, and then right na- next to us is a um, a salon which also has a thousand square feet. So mm-hmm. it's a, it's about half the size of the Ballard store, mm-hmm. but. Um, but it can do everything that Ballard could do. It does. It, it does it all. It does the yeah. same thing. Yeah. And better. No, I'm just joking. Yeah. <laughs> right. Well, they're on our tail. That's yeah, for sure. We have yeah. a very strong crew team up there, uh-huh. and they are making a significant difference. Mm, that's awesome. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the employees make a big difference. Mm-hmm. As you guys know, you guys know Dina. Well, yes. Just, yes. You know, I just Love hired Dina. her. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I think that's going to be a good hire for me. I Absolutely. think so. Yeah. So Very I just hired lucky. her as my assistant. I haven't even told Very you good. that, Dan. So yep. yeah. Anyway, yeah. um, watch your back, Dan. <laughs> 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 so we kind of touched on this last segment, but I wanted to go over it a little bit more because this, I think, is a big, a big deal overall for real estate for anyone that's listening. Um, just to kind of go over how the demographics have changed. For either location, both locations, I guess for the Finney Ridge Greenwood one, it's more probably a little different because you switched locations. So that's going to be that was probably a bigger change in who was coming in. But maybe for Ballard, which has kind of been there for years now, 13, 14 years, 14 years. Wow. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So what's the demographic been like? What's the change been like in the the type of customer that's come in? And and what have you seen? Hmm. I'm stumping him. <laughs> well, I think uh, Ballard. When when we first opened Ballard, uh, that that was the uh, it was still the spot where you. It's a great spot for a first time home buyer. Mm-hmm. You're going there, and that was a great spot to to find that. It was young families. Yep. 
um, and um, and the, the town was very sleepy still. It, it was, was very much f- known as the fisherman's town. Mm, yep, very but Scandinavian. It, it very yeah. Scandinavian, yeah. super charming. The, 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 the ceiling levels had just been changed a few years. I'm not sure of the year when that happened. I don't even but, know. But you yeah. know where? It said, but the word was out that that was that was the place yeah. that you wanted to be yeah. because there was going to be a lot of development. Mm-hmm. Uh, somebody described it to me once as vertical population yep. is going to is mm-hmm. coming to Ballard. Yep. So that was one of the reasons we we sought out that location. Smart. Um, but uh, still, at that time, in 2002, 2003, very, very sleepy, quiet, uh, for the most part. Uh, and then, obviously, things have you know just kind of steamrolled you know since then. So mm-hmm. now, it's you know you it's not really a necessarily a first time buyer's area. There used to be you know condos. Yep. There's fewer condos now. Uh, more apartment living. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's more. Um, F- it's uh, young families now yeah. and young um, executives, workers who come and. Uh, live there in their apartments and then uh, bus it downtown if they need to or they walk to work or Mm -hmm. bike to work. Yeah, right across the street is Swedish Hospital, which uh, mind-blowingly was going to be closed. I don't know how they made that decision, but obviously somebody smart decided, no, we got to keep this. (laughs) Yeah. And uh, that's just kind of been growing uh, leaps and bounds as well. Uh, On the street just behind us, there has to be uh, three or four more projects that are happening, and that's happening on Mm -hmm. every street, it seems. I actually counted the projects that are just directly behind us, so Mm -hmm. from Market to 65th, up mm-hmm. where Ballard High is. Yep. There's 12 places that are under development wow. within a two block radius, just going straight up. Going straight north. Yes. Straight north. That's crazy. 12. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. that's, you know, that, that's been Ballard, and, th- and everybody's kind of well aware of that. It's still, still a very hip, mm-hmm. uh, great spot to be, great restaurants, great bars, great. Um, S- you know services and lifestyle. Things like that. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, mm-hmm. it's it's definitely a fun. So spot to so be. one spot or one thing that I want to point out is that you guys are you guys did what I am telling people to do all the time. You saw an opportunity. You saw, hey, we're looking at where we want to put our roots, our business roots. I'm talking more family roots, mm-hmm. but yeah. where do we want to put our business roots? Okay, well, what are the different neighborhoods? Ballard, they just raised the the height limit on buildings. Mm-hmm. Let's go there. There's going to be development there. Mm. It's the same thing that I'm talking about. Before you guys came on in the first segment, we were talking about how Tableau and Google and all these tech companies mm-hmm. and Facebook and Westlake, how they're all moving to urban centers and growing and expanding and how that is an opportunity for people to get a better deal on real estate or to... Maybe not necessarily get a better deal right now, but long term. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. Start planning for Mm -hmm. it. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So you got to look ahead at what's going on and what's happening. That's what you guys did. So it doesn't mean anything coming from me, but congratulations (laughs) on doing that. That was smart. That was really smart. And that's what I'm preaching all the time to people. Mm -hmm. It makes a big difference. So that's, I think, a big reason why, maybe not big, it's part of the reason why I think you guys were so successful um, for having a small business in a little neighborhood. I mean... It grew massively, so yeah. you were smart. Mm-hmm. So good job. Yeah, well, thank you. We got lucky in, in, in many respects. We feel. I mean, we were kind of directed in the right way. We've got some good advice, and mm-hmm. it's like investing. You want to, you know, you want to lo- look mm-hmm. at all the indicators and mm-hmm. understand, you know, what's uh, what's going to position yourself to the the best the best area. Spoken like a true CFO. <laughs> <laughs> so, describe well. I was going to say describe the feel of Ballard and describe the feel of Finney and kind of how they compare to each other. Would you say that they're pretty similar? If someone was looking to move to either neighborhood, would you say they're pretty similar? Is Finney a little more family-oriented, or what's what's the feel, in your opinion, since you guys are in the business and I'd, in the neighborhood every yeah, day? Yeah, I'd say Finney's almost kind of San Francisco-like. With There's mm-hmm. more hill. Obviously, you're mm-hmm. on a ridge, yeah. and you've got a little more hills and things like that to deal with. Uh, Ballard's a little more expansive. Mm-hmm. Um and uh, there's, you know, just the amount of building, you know, that's happening in Ballard, which I, people kind of lament, but at, you know, from a business perspective, it's, it's, uh, I think it's fine. But um, I think, uh, I think what they do have in common though is their walkable mm. neighborhoods. Yeah, yeah. Mm. that's a big deal. Mm-hmm. Huge deal, and they all have um, wonderful restaurants and uh, places to go. You really don't need to leave your neighborhood in most mm-hmm. cases to get something done because mm. they have. Both of them have wonderful markets, and um, you know there's Ken Mark Ken's Market on the Ridge. There's mm-hmm. banks. You you can 
go to your ACE hardware or whatever mm -hmm. you need mm -hmm. and, yep. and then walk back. St uh, we see a lot of families with strollers, and mm -hmm. so they yeah. pack up the stroller and they get their errands done, and we happen to be one of their stops. So, yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. you guys are in the community. You're embedded in the community, and um, it, it, you know the chances of somebody listening to this live interview and actively relocating here right now is a little bit less slim or more slim than somebody listening to this recording that we send out to our clients or maybe find on, on online. If somebody's listening to this, what are a couple of your favorite places like pub or bar, someplace to hang out and just go grab a drink in Ballard? Ballard. Mm -hmm. um, well, I think um, I can answer that. Okay, <laughs> right, you do that one. <laughs> he's such a mic hog, isn't he? <laughs> <laughs> Thankfully, he's so good at it. Yeah, theater major. <laughs> right, right. Yeah, you didn't know what you were doing when yeah, you were exactly. this on. <laughs> 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 I have to say, the Stone Burner in Ballard is amazing, and Bastille mm -hmm. is great. Yeah. Um, we love uh, the Seventy Fourth Ale House on um, mm -hmm. Finney yep. Ridge. Yep. Uh, those are really great places, and um, our favorite pizza place in the Ridge is is the Ridge. The Ridge, yeah. Yeah. yeah, the Ridge. Pizza awesome, really awesome pizza. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and well, we you have heard, kids, so <laughs> yeah, no, that's yeah. huge. And you heard it from them. I and mean, we always like to obviously we are sharing this with all of our clients because we want them to first come and see, learn more about SIP and SHIP. But uh, it's always great to hear it from somebody that's embedded in the community. So, thank you. I got to ask a question real quick because this is my side of the world. We got about 30 seconds left here. Do you guys notarize? Yes. You we do, do notarize? Mm -hmm, we do. Yeah. Nice. And we do that. all okay. kinds of documents. There's so not that's one huge. that we don't do. That's big mm -hmm. for us in mm -hmm. real estate and lending. Oh, yeah. So, no, that's really big. We need it quite a bit. Yeah. Well, thank you guys very much both for coming on. Um, if you haven't been to Sip and Ship, mm -hmm. you definitely need to go check it out. Grab a cup of coffee and, uh, and yeah, we're going to have to come back and read this. Uh, the commercial on yeah. there so we're we'll gonna do give another next. plug absolutely we'll some so stay yeah. tuned for seattle real estate radio coming up seattle next. seattle real estate radio with your hosts christian nossum and dan keller continues after this